Okay, so now let's get started with the controls. Okay, so we're going just to use some simple nerve circle controls. So let's quickly create them. So create a primitive circle. So it's down to the origin, down there. Let's group it. And, oops. and let's snap it up here. Oh, come on. There we go. So let's snap it. There we go. And we need to reduce size. Oops, I think I selected some stuff I didn't want to. So let's get rid of those component display. Display CV. It's not this one. The other one. There we go. Display CV. No. So let's grab the curve. Let's get it down. Yeah, something like that might work. Let's rotate it. And let's move it forward. There we go. So that's going to be our control. I don't want it to be too big, so too distracting for me. So some, something like that might work. Perfect. So now let's duplicate that and let's move it to the other mid control. I believe it's this one. And also the corners like that. We me we bleh, sorry. We might want to rotate that a little so it's a bit more parallel, or else actually perpendicular to the mesh. Something like that might work. And now we just need the one for the middle control. Secondary control, so let's duplicate that and let's place it. Let's make it a little bit smaller since they are secondary. There we go. Let's duplicate again. Duplicate again. Again, we might want to rotate that. And there we go. So I'm pretty sure I missed. A CV here and there, probably. So let's double check that really quick. Let's show up again this, the control vertex. Display. Oh, where is the component display? There we go. Yes, I actually missed it. There we go. Let's check again for the other curve if we got all the all the, the control in the right position. I want to select the curve, please. This one. So yeah, looks like I hit all of them. Perfect. There we go. So let's quickly rename those. So let's select the first up one and let's use our beloved comet. So L up I rename. And we're gonna add the tag C and T like that. So now we step up one level and we give the same name but with the tag GRP. And we repeat the same process for the other control, we just change up or down. There we go. Control. Let's go up one level. And let's change your P. Now for the <coughs> for the corner, you can actually use the tag inside corner, outside corner. I'm just going for L I corner control. Control. Now let's go up one level. And group. Perfect. So that's our group here. All of those the controls. No. There we go. Like that. And let's group it. Let's call them L I control GRP. 
Let's give it a color of red. So drawing overrides, novel overrides, red. And then we change the color of the secondary control to yellow. Like that. Where's the yellow? I missed the yellow. Oh, come on. There we go. Hi, yellow. Nice to meet you. Okay. So now let's quickly connect to an attribute that we are going to add right now and we call it secondary CMT. It's going to be an integer from 0 to 1. So the reason why I'm using an integer is because it's easier actually for the animators because, for example, when you have several uh, visibility control, you can actually middle click, select the, uh, the attribute, middle click, and change the value. So it's pretty handy for the animators rather than the regular visibility with a, it's a drop and down or an enum, which is actually harder. So I actually like better this setup like that. Okay. So let's put it to zero and let's quickly connect the attribute. So secondary, let's find secondary control, visibility, visibility. And let's do the same for the upper control. So secondary control, visibility, secondary control, visibility. I wonder why, oh, it was actually oh, visibility was on. Okay. So those are our control. But our control are actually not moving. And that's bad. We actually need to move the curve. Okay. So there, usually there are two ways to control the control vectors of a curve. So one is to hook up or, or directly to the control. Of the to the control vertex of the curve by plugging the word position of the object you want to use as a control. The reason why we cannot use that is because we're going to override the curve position with a deformer. So if we actually use a deformer to deform the curve, they can go stuck on one on top of each other and give the desired effect. So don't worry for that about now uh, right now. Because if everything is going to be clear when we are going to add some extra feature later to the eye. So for now, just trust me on that. We are going to use some joints, so a skin cluster to control the curve. Don't worry, it's just five vertex. Mine is going to kill, kill fast, those skin cluster blazing fast. So we don't have any performance, it's just a really small skin cluster. So no worries about that. So let's show up again. Secondary control. And let's just create quickly some bones. So let's place it one here. We actually need to show the joints. So let's snap it. Yeah, that's pretty big. Maybe too big. Let's hide just for now the joints so to make our work easier. So let's snap those bones. Oops. No. Last one. There we go. So let's quickly rename those in the comment. Let's call it L I G T. You can add subdivide them up below, but actually. There is no need for that. So let's group them. L I curve G T G R P something like that. So we need to skin the uh, low resolution curve with those bone. And the default skinning will work. So low resolution, so skin cluster, bind skin, smooth bind. So if we grab that. There we go, it works. Let's do the same for the lower one. There we go. Skin, bind, skin, smooth, bind. So now we're just going to 
you can actually parent the, the bone under the, the control or if you want to keep stuff nice and clean and separate we're going to use some point constraint the reason why I'm going to do a point constraint and not a orient constraint is because the point constraint is actually a bit faster than the orient constraint uh, sorry the, the parent constraint and we don't need the orientation here to, to rotate the bone so constraint point let's repeat that for all the bones There we go. It is already connected. Okay. Now we have what we want. Ooh, actually here I got the wrong curve. Shame on me. So skin detach skin. So like nothing happened. Let's grab the low resolution this time. Let's grab the bone. Skin, bind skin is one bind. This time is it correct? Yes. Perfect. Okay. <clears throat> so now we need to control the secondary control. So in this case, there are um, again two ways to do that. So you can parent the secondary control under the mid control or keep those control, the secondary control somewhat average between the control, the corner control and the mid control and that's what we are going to do. Okay? So let's select the mid control, the corner control and we need the, the group of the control so we don't lock the transformation on the control itself and we do a point. Now we do the same for all the others. Point constraint. Point constraint. So what I'm doing, I'm actually selecting the control itself so I see where is it in the outliner. Then I do an undo and I select it, the group. There we go. So that's our setup. In place and working. Pretty cool, huh? So let's have a quick look now. So you see, oh, we actually need to show the, the bones, otherwise it's kind of hard. So it doesn't matter how we deform our curve. You can see the bones are always sliding on top of the of the geometry. So you see. We have a really flexible setup, so we can slide all over the place, and that's a really nice setup. Okay, so that's actually so you have a lot of flexibility here. So that's actually the, the base of our setup, but we can add still a couple of features like one of these is the smart blink. So basically we can make the eyelids matching each other and now we're going to do that. 